What is fire? Now this is fire. But I mean sort of what is fire? What is inside of it? We heat our homes with it, we heat our water, we run our trains, our cars off it. It's what gets things into space. And yet us scientists don't completely understand it. In this film, we're gonna try and uncover what it actually is. We're gonna start with the humble candle. Did I mention that you shouldn't do this at home? There is so much that the candle flame can tell us. Like, what is inside of fire? So, if I hold this on it, you can see that fire is hollow. Inside the flame is nothing. Well, not nothing, but it's definitely not fire. But I wanna start with something a bit more simple. Do you think that to light a candle, you need to light the wick, right? Well, not necessarily, because if that was the case, how come I can do this? You can light it without going anywhere near the wick. And that's because the thing doing the burning in the candle is actually wax that's being turned into a gas. And this gas is in the smoke trail. And we call that thing that does the burning, the fuel. And it's one of the three main, I suppose, ingredients that you need to be able to get fire. And another one, is oxygen. And we can show that using this second candle here. Because at the moment, it's burning, it's got fuel, but also it's using the oxygen in the air that's around it. But I can restrict that oxygen using this jar. So no new air, no new oxygen can get to it. And eventually, it will use up all the oxygen in the jar and go out. No more fire. To have a fire, you need at least some oxygen. The more oxygen you have, then that normally leads to a more violent flame. Now, whatever you do, don't try this one at home. Here we have just normal cotton wool. And if I burn this, it's burning just using the oxygen that's in the air. But here, this is a special type of cotton wool and it's got extra oxygen embedded within it. So that burns like this. Now, the third ingredient that we need is heat. You can use a flame to get that heat, but you don't need a flame at all. You just need heat. So, this is my hot plate. And as you can see, there is no flame at all. And watch what happens. I'm sorry, I can get carried away sometimes. But I do love fire. And one of the reasons I love it is because I suppose it can be considered to be clever because yes, you need those three things for a fire, but as long as you've got enough fuel and oxygen, then the chemical reaction of those two reacting together can produce enough heat to keep the fire going and going and going. So much so that some fires have been burning for thousands of years. In Turkey, there are some fires called the Eternal Flames of Chimera on Mount Olympus. And rumor has it that they have been burning for an impressive 2,000 500 years. And finally, you might think that fire always looks like this, but fire can also look like this. This is Kawaijan, a volcano in Indonesia, where you can see the flames burn with a beautiful blue flame, and that's because it's burning sulfur. The color of a flame depends on which fuel is being burnt. So normally we burn carbon-based fuels and carbon burns with a yellowy orangey flame. But barium burns with a green flame and strontium burns with a red flame. But it's not only the fuel that can influence the color of a flame, temperature can too. 
For example, low red flames are actually the coolest and they're just a mild 500 degrees Celsius. Whereas clear orange flames, they're a bit hotter, they're 1,200 degrees Celsius. But the hottest flames are blue and violet and they can reach an eyebrow burning 1,600 degrees Celsius. Okay, what do we know? We know that fuel and oxygen react together and we know that that chemical reaction produces heat to keep the reaction going. Now, in terms of the flame that we see, now that is quite simply the visual part of this chemical reaction. And I can prove that by going back to our hollow flame. So what are we seeing here? Well, we've got that ring of fire and inside that ring of fire, there's not nothing. That is fuel, but no oxygen can get to that fuel. So there's no chemical reaction, so no burning. There's only burning in that outside ring because it's only where this fuel is reacting with the oxygen that we can see the flame because a flame is just us seeing this chemical reaction. Well, that's it. It's our experience of this chemical reaction and we experience chemical reactions all the time. So when you see leaves on a tree and the seasons change and they change color, that color changes our experience of that chemical reaction. You expect fire to be a thing. And this is what I love about fire. Like even though I know it's this experience of this chemical reaction, the next time I'm sat around a campfire, watching those flames, mesmerized by them, I'll be wondering, what are they? What are they made of? What is inside them? When I know full well, it's nothing. You didn't think I'd leave you there, did you? I'm a pyrotechnician. This is a film about fire. And fire, my friends, you shall have. We are gonna end this film with a fiery balloon full of hydrogen. And we're gonna light that using this bowl of liquid fuel. And we're gonna light that using this ball of special cotton wool. And we're gonna light that using this hot plate. Now, and I promise this is the last time I'll say it today, don't try this at home. Oh. There we go.